Johnny boy, how are you, son? Mate, how's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm really good, mate. Like, I find your story fascinating, um, and not many people know Johnny Allen. Tell us a bit about, you know, like your background, where you come from, and how it all started. Yeah, look, I think I had a pretty normal upbringing as a kid. We, we lived in rural Ireland, um, had ponies from a very young age, and probably riding for as long as I can remember. Um, but look, I, I played a lot of sports when I was a kid, so we had the ponies as well. It probably wasn't until I was 12, 13, in my teenager years that I probably got more involved in the racing side of things. How did you get into the jump racing? How did that, how'd that bug get you? Look, I suppose jump racing in Ireland is, is, is there certainly different to what it is here. Growing up, you dream of being a jump jockey. Like, I think no, very few kids in Ireland dream of being a flat jockey. I think where I grew up too, it, it was a big kind of a jump racing area, a lot of point to point stuff like that. So um, once I really got involved in racing, all I wanted to be was a jump jockey. And tell us about when you made that decision to come to Australia full time, how, how that all come about? Because it's a bit of a good story, this one. Yeah, look, it originally, I think it was 2011, I came out there first. To be honest, in my last couple of years riding in Ireland, I'd been struggling and um, struggling to get rides even. And an advertisement came up in the paper in um, one of the local papers, just a racing post, one of the racing papers looking for jump jockeys to be interested to come to Australia for the season. So. I felt I had nothing to lose and worth the chance. I was going to come out here for six months, see how it went on. I think if I'd have stayed at home riding at that stage, I don't think I, I could have kept going the way I was going. So um, obviously I, I'd gone quite well. So when the jump season was finished, I've always been not too heavy. So I just had to work, get my weight down a bit. And I said, uh, try and pick up a few rides on the flat. I believe your first flat winner in Australia was at St Arnold, which was Cox Plate Day. It was the same day that I actually won the Cox Plate on Ocean Park. Yeah, 2012 Cox Plate Day, that, that was my first winner on a uh, horse of Dana Sullivan's actually. I think I won a couple of hurdle races on him after, but um, I can remember actually walk, watching that Cox Plate in, in the jockey's room there that day. Yeah, um, well, in a, in a funny twist of fate, I actually stood right on that tower, right there, the Stewart's Tower, and watched you win your first Cox Plate. So, uh, great moment. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, I suppose it's hard to imagine back then that that that, that would be me a few years later, but um, certainly a day I'll, I'll never forget. To team up with Joseph O'Brien, tell us a bit of that, about that story, how that all come about. I'd ridden a winner for Joseph in um, two years prior at the Flemington Carnival, um, yep. downdraft, down so like, I suppose we, we formed a bit of a connection then, and also, look, I didn't know Joseph when I, when I was back riding in Ireland, but I did give a number of years working for his grandfather, who, who, tra who trains where Joseph trains now, so yep. I suppose we had that connection, and um, with COVID and everything, and jockeys unable to travel, probably gave me the opportunity to, to, to get aboard that horse, but um, yeah, look, certainly very grateful for him giving me the opportunity. State of rest of the 100, Animo wearing it down. State of rest just in front of Animo. State of rest holding on. State of rest, I think, has just won for the Emerald Isle from Animo and very elegant in a thrilling Cox Plate. Just tell us about that experience over the day, like the protest. I was actually, you know, I was in the room there when you were going in and out with the protest room and it, it went on for quite a while. Um, I felt personally that you were never going to lose the race because I watched it live and I could see what, the, what was going to be. I've been in protests and when I thought I won, was never going to lose them and I've lost them. But so, pretty hairy moment for you. Yeah, as soon as I crossed the line, I was question, like, you have the elation of winning the race, but then I was g giving out to myself nearly for letting that happen or leaving my horse drift or like, I was saying, oh, why didn't you just pull your stick through to your left earlier and kept it straight? And so, even though I was elated and really wanted to celebrate, it, it was hard to really enjoy that moment until, um, luckily enough, the decision went our way and we were able to hold on. This is one of the longest half hours of my life anyhow, but uh, I think when I was in there, when I saw the photo of the actual margin, it, I thought there was enough margin to suggest that it was going to be a lot harder for, um, for him to take it off me anyhow. Yeah, and let's just talk now recently. Uh, one of the most exciting horses I think in Australia right now is Hotutsu. What are your su suggestions about this horse, where he can go? Really looking forward to what he can see, what he can do in the future. I don't mean to sound hiring it or anything, but the way he'd been working leading into the Australian Guineas, I, I actually thought he'd nearly win the race easier than what he did, but I, I felt the soft ground may have dented his brilliance a little bit. Um, but look, he's certainly a very exciting horse, and um, look, all, all those big races next year and in the future are going to be his target, I think. It'd be great if he could even get back here maybe in six months' time. I think he should be a, 
Lowe's Cox, Cox Well, Cox that's Hall. that's the race I think he can win. He's got the ability to sprint off the back of a speed. He's, and, the, and the other day he showed he's got the ability to tough it out too. So, you, you know, the Cox Plate can show up, a, throw up a few different scenarios. So you need that adaptable type of horse. So he showed me the other day that he's the adaptable horse that could... And I, I believe that he can win a Cox Plate. Yes, certainly hope so. Look, he's very well balanced too. He's, he's, he's a nice, like, travels so well through his race. So um, he's not too dissimilar a horse to actually stay the rest. So I think um, hopefully we'll be back here in six months and uh, fighting out to finish. So, John, tell me about your ride in the All-Star Mile, Sierra Sue. Yeah, look, she, she's a very, very good filly. Um, I first sat on her winning the Majora Cup six months ago and she's won two group ones since. So. She, she's a live chance on it, I believe. Um, she's won over the mile in Flemington. She's in top form, so if she gets the right run the race, I'm, I'm sure she'll be um, very competitive. How do you think you'll be riding her in, in say, an all-star mile? Yeah, look, she's quite adaptable. I think once she can get a soft run in a race, she can show a real good turn of foot. So, look, ideally, if we can be just buried away in the middle of them and have the last crack at him, I think she'll be um, hopefully fighting out to finish. It's going to be a very competitive race. It, it's all-star miles, big prize money. So what do you think of the opposition in the race? Yeah, look, as you said, it, it, it's a very strong race. Um, look, I was very impressed with Zaki's run first up the other day. So he's going to be a, a live shout. And some of the three-year-olds are a bit unknown. So they can always jump and take the next step. So look, I think it's going to be a very competitive race. But um, just hopefully I can be fighting out to finish with Yeah, him. I hope you can, mate. I'm looking forward to it. Your immediate plans, like, obviously, the autumn's right upon us now. What are you, you going to go to Sydney? What are you going to do? You base yourself here? Yeah, look, hopefully, um, if, if good rides up there, I'll definitely um, consider going to Sydney. That's the goal. You want, you want to try and chase the good races, um, big races. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll get up there for the, for the autumn with a bit of luck. Another derby, maybe. I think you've won it. I think last year you'd won nearly every derby race in the Eastern Seaboard. Is that correct? Yeah, I've, I've, I've won all the Group 1 ones anyhow, yeah. So, look, I've had a great success in the derby, so... Um, yeah, I won't knock back another couple. Well, John, it's been really great to chat with you. I look forward to the, uh, watching your journey from here onwards. Yeah, thank you very much, Bossy.